Well, we would all love if Jesse Duplantis would repent, except he is continuing to get worse with every single message that he puts out, bragging about his wealth, endorsing the prosperity gospel. Look, I know there's a lot of people, they eat this up, right? No matter what this man says, however many times he's exposed, they're going to continue to support him. However, you know, it's funny how God works sometimes because... In this particular instance here that we're going to talk about, his own wife, Kathy, exposes him as an ungodly man. We're going to get into all the details of it here in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story how did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. Also, if God puts it on your heart and you enjoy what I do and you would like to donate here to my ministry, a few different ways you could do that. One, hit the super thanks button on the YT video here or join my Patreon, make a monthly contribution. You could do it for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash not by site news, that link in the description. Joining Patreon, you get all my videos before they hit the main YT platform. Some exclusive links go up there as well. Plus, if you want, you can send me DMs, all sorts of other cool things you could do on Patreon. Check it out. It's patreon.com slash news. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Now, you know, unlike Jesse, I'm not going to, you know, try and attach your, you know, your prosperity and your wealth by by donating to me. Of course, I appreciate, I've never had an issue with someone asking, you know, to donate to a ministry, but it's how they go about it and the deception and the twisting of scripture that they use, like Jesse Duplantis has done to make this fortune for himself that he is currently sitting on. Let's not forget, this is a man who has like, what, a 40, you know, thousand square foot home, right? A, a, you know, a jet, that, you know, remember he was calling out Christians back in 2018 to help donate uh, to the new jet because, you know, apparently he didn't have enough of those already. He also recently said in a sermon not long ago that the reason that Jesus hasn't returned yet is because not enough people have given to his ministry. Isn't that something? And also that if you want Jesus to stop crying, because that's apparently what Jesus is doing, he's crying in heaven, that you need to donate more to the Jesse Duplantis Ministries. I mean, I could just... I could go on and on and on about this man. And, you know, honestly, it pains me to do it, but I got to call him out. And I'm someone that's met Jesse Duplantis. I I had lunch with the man. I, I have a whole video where I, I talk about this. You could go back on the channel and check that out, where I talk about, you know, when he prayed for me and, and what he said at the time. And, and I didn't get better, by the way. You know, this is one of the big, you know, big healers out there. How I went to lunch with him, all of that. So, you know, I, I wish I didn't have to do this, but... I think it's important in this hour for the body of Christ to expose these false prophets, these false healers, evangelists, televangelists for who they really are. Now, in his latest, <laughs> in his latest, uh, you know, rants, let's just call it, uh, Jesse got quite upset about the fact that people are still, you know, criticizing him for his money, for his, you know, I said his his huge mansion, his jet all of this, right? He didn't like this at all. And he says, I still get people all the time that, you know, come at me because of my money and this and that and say that I'm this and that. He goes, he goes, look, I'll tell you this. He said, poverty is a curse. He said, did you see Jesus going around calling himself poor, struggling to eat? No. It says that in heaven, you're always, you're rich everywhere, right? This doesn't exist there. He goes, I am a blessed man. I am blessed, you know, physically. I'm blessed you know, emotionally and, you know, of course, as it comes to being financially secure, all of that. Of course, we know that there are riches in heaven. However, the way that Jesse frames this by saying that poverty is a curse for those that are in poverty right now. And let me tell you this, there are good Christian people that unfortunately are in poverty. That is not their fault. They are not a curse because they do not have the wealth of Jesse Duplantis, okay? I'm being completely clear on this, okay? I, I, wanna, I wanna stress that point. Because when you say things like this, like Jesse does, 
That is what you put these people in a mindset of, that they are somehow cursed because they're experiencing poverty. Not all of these people are, are swindlers like Jesse Duplantis that have fleeced the flock for decades and decades with their ministries. They struggle every single day. But you know what? They love the Lord despite all of it. They may not have a dime maybe to their name. Maybe some of them are homeless. Maybe some of them, they do have a home, but it's not, you know, a, a fancy one like Jesse. Maybe they struggle to pay their rent. But the fact that this man would call this a curse and, and make people feel that way is an absolute disgrace. And then go on to, again, brag about his wealth. I have all this money. I'm Jesse Duplantis, right? He tries to back this up in the scripture. And this is where things got interesting. And again, I think this is where God has a sense of humor. And he's trying to, you know, God's allowing all this to happen. I'm telling you this now. Okay. But Jesse says, I got a scripture that can back up my wealth. Now he brings up Psalm chapter 49. And this is what he says. Be not afraid. Now I'm paraphrasing the, the, the scripture here. Be not afraid, you know, when one's riches, you know, begins to increase. When one becomes a rich man, when his house becomes you know, increased by, you know, he's talking about, you know, ministry and, and all of this. Now, he, he, he does something interesting here. He pitches it over to Kathy, his wife, and he wants her to read it from the Amplified Bible, okay? Now, as Kathy begins to read, it's a completely different translation here. As Kathy reads the scripture out of Psalm 49, she says, do not be afraid when an ungodly man becomes rich and tries to increase his house. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not what Jesse said though, because it, he said, do not be afraid when a man becomes rich and increases his house. There was nothing about an ungodly man. You see the entire chapter of Psalm 49, it really warns against those who brag about their wealth and what will happen if they continue to do so. And again, addressing those who are ungodly who brag about their money as well. And I always think of also the scripture for what does it profit a man to gain the entire world and lose their own soul? And I think that's also something that Jesse, you know, has to think about as well. He tried to pivot away from this after Kathy read that translation, because again, it completely exposes Jesse for using this scripture and either being completely ignorant to it, or, you know, it just, it was just something that was just perfect timing to where he gets called out for this. An ungodly man becomes rich, and he tries to justify the scripture for why it's okay for him to have all the money, but not just have all the money. Because it's not about having money. It's about how you go about getting it and what you're telling people in order to receive it when you're running a false ministry to do so, right? We know that God does not have an issue with money, but it's all about how you go about getting it and what Jesse has done, along with all these other big televangelists now for decades and decades now. Um, you know, it's honestly sad because, you know, I, I believe there's a short time left before Christ returns. I don't know the date. No one knows the date or the hour. Uh, but it really seems like that now more than ever, even people like Benny Hinn I've talked about recently, instead of these these men, because I touched on it, instead of them repenting, they're, they're, actually, they're actually hitting the gas pedal on this false doctrine and man, again, it's just, it's so sad. But the Bible warned us that we were going to see this sort of thing increase in the last days, that there would be many false Christs and false prophets that would rise in the last days and deceive many. And I've always said that word many to me means in the millions and millions. Some people look at that as just, no, it's just a couple. No, no. Uh, look, look at the amount of views that these televangelists get on their, their sermons, on their videos. It's in the millions. So, that's what I'm talking about. But I want to hear from you. I'll have more information on this here in the description. What are your thoughts on what Jesse said and how Kathy kind of calls him out here uh, by reading the amplified version of that chapter and, and everything else? Let me know what I want to do right now. Something I do on all these videos. Let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church, exposing the false prophets. We always want to give people the opportunity to receive Christ into their life. So for anybody watching now, if you're someone that has not yet accepted Christ into your life, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. 
The first thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget, the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, or hit the super thanks button on the YT video here to make a contribution that way. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you, and I'll talk with you soon.